Oh, hey, cutie. Haven't seen you in a bit, girl. There's no obvious way to remove the rifle from the case. No obvious way. But I bet I can get in there. Scans indicate this device contains enough potential energy to destroy the entire planet. We could just end it. End it all, dude. And I could take the whole planet with me. What do you guys think? Should I do it? What is up, people? I'm IGP, and welcome back to Subnautica. We have about 25 minutes until the sunbeam comes down to this planet and rescues us, takes us home, and everyone's happy. Now, normally people would be like, well, I should just, you know, wait. It's only 25 minutes. I can fiddle with something until they arrive. But I like to prepare for the worst, just in case something doesn't work out. I want to make sure that I'm well prepared. And that means me uh, continuing to do what I was doing previously, just in case something might happen. I don't know. Anything could really happen, right? The sunbeam could get here. Uh, you know, maybe it can lose its way, take the wrong turn, get distracted by all the cute space animals in space, or maybe they explode. I don't know. You know, I don't know. I'm not a, I'm not a, a I'm not a fortune teller. Okay. I am not, I do not have the gift of foresight. I can't tell the future. So I'm going to continue from where we left off. And uh, actually, I can't remember exactly what I was doing, but we'll figure that out in just a second. If you would like to see some more, be sure to let me know in the comment section below and let's begin. 23 minutes now. I took way too long to talk. So last episode, we went to the floater island. We found out about the Degassi survivors. Uh, that is then bringing us down deeper. The proposed Degassi base, which I'm assuming is down into the, uh, the, the Jelly Shroom Caves, which is a place that I am super ready for. It might be a little bit too deep for me. Uh, no, it's not. It's 250 meters deep, I guess. No, we're fine, because we have 300 on our sea moth. And we also built this base as a temporary shelter to house all of our stupid items, growing a bunch of plants and whatnot, and housing one cute little Reginald. So cute. We're going to have this one have babies, but we need another one for that, so that I can feast upon their flesh as they grow older. They grow in containment for me to consume them later on, which is just how the world works, including this one. So... All right, let's get our sea moth. We're gonna go straight there. I'm pretty much ready. I got food, I got water, get all the good stuff. We're gonna head straight down to the jelly shroom caves before the sunbeam gets here. Now this should lead to the grassy plateaus. It does. Is this a hole? This is not the hole. There's a hole somewhere, I'll find it. Oh, I actually can't recall if there was a direct hole straight down to the place. Oh, there is. Wow. Okay, never mind. All right, we're going down, dudes. Oh, I'm so scared. Oh, God damn it. That one actually hurt my chest. Oh, wow. We are right on top. Dude, you know what sucks? I have played this game. So this is what I'm talking about. This game is ever so ever expanding that I didn't even realize that there was a hole above it. I thought there was at, at before this base was even here. Like when the Jelly Shroom Caves was like first developed or like in the early stages of the game, there were like multiple entrances but then when this base was here, all I can remember is the one that starts on the opposite side of the cave. In this cave support a microcosm of unique, possibly predatory life forms. Detecting an artificial structure somewhere in the region. Here we are. This is the base that the, the Gassy had built from the floater islands. Actually, you know what? Weren't we supposed to... Okay, we were supposed to start on the opposite side, right? Because there's like platform... Yeah, there's a floodlight up there. And I don't think they have PDAs on them. But there's like a trail of platforms that they made for like storing resources and whatnot. And those things are the best. The crab snakes, they look harmless. They look like little worms. They're actually quite big. And they like to consume people like me. I think there's another, ooh, what was that? This Wait, what? Was that part of the music? All right, I'm just trying to collect all, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Okay, yeah, I don't think there's any PDAs on them. So they're not that important. Dude, this music. Whoa, the crab snake is infected. Hello. Oh my goodness. Dude. All right, I'm just going to go safely. Ah, oh, yeah, go back into your home, my good friend. Go back. Oh, there's one right there. Oh, there's one sitting in the mushroom. All right, hang on a second. We're going to be safe. No! It's going to explode my shit. Oh, oh, oh. Stay away from me. Do not attack my thing. I, I cannot have you destroy this. Give it here. Oh my goodness. Well, what a great start to a video, right? We got 17 minutes left. Let's just go in here, dude. 
I don't even care. Uh, wait, there's one down here, right? Yes. Hello? Aha! My- Oh my god! Jesus Christ! Alright, let's see. David- Ow, oh my god! Please, you stupid idiot. Get over here. You know what? Come here. <laughs> wait, that wasn't you. Get over here. There we go. Okay, now let's listen to it. Degassi survivors, it's Midas Log. Yeah, there we go. These conniving, corporate, bourgeois, inbred, incompetent, self-absorbed jerks don't have a damn clue. The kid's not so bad. He's even useful. But I swear, everything that comes out of his father's idiot face is a narcissistic lie. He wants to stay in this cave? His problem. I'm the one doing the heavy lifting. When sea monsters are hunting you, you don't hide. You hunt the sea monsters. Then you build a bigger boat out of sea monster bones and you hunt bigger monsters. Keep going until there aren't any monsters left to hunt you. I'm going deeper. I'm gonna find what shot us down and I'm gonna tear its damn heart out. I started the prep work. The kids taught me how to make enameled glass. I've started stockpiling metal ores to build myself a sea moth. I'll raid the indoor grow beds. I guess we can all see how that turned out for you. Son, there is always a pecking order. And in our world, money makes a hierarchy. I pay Maida a fraction of what I pay you, and you a fraction of what I pay me. If money makes the hierarchy, why is Marguerite making the decision? We need her. We let her think what she likes, so long as she does what she's told. What if she doesn't? For enough money, she will. People always do. Signal location uploaded to PDA. Whoa, what? What signal? What is that? Wait, what signal? What are you talking about? I didn't get a signal. Maybe I should pay attention to what I'm actually getting here. I don't think I got anything different, right? Oh, wait, is this it? You know what Maida told me today? She wants to build a habitat 500 meters below sea level, more than a kilometer northeast of here. And she needs Bart and I to do it. She's got it into her head that she can save us if she just acts recklessly enough. But I've hauled Star Wars to Neptune, Plasteel to the Federation. <sighs> This family operates nine different seconds. mining colonies across the Ariadne arm. Maida thinks she's better suited to lead. Her contract still says otherwise. But I just cannot damn well tell whether it's the stupidest idea I ever heard. Or my only hope. I turned 80 years old last week. I thought I had another 80 in me, but marooned on this planet, there's no swapping out of my liver when the old one fails. Here? A mortal. A maida is useful. So, it's my responsibility to make a decision. Return to the island and hope whatever not that the Ghazi out of the sky won't do the same to the rescue ship. Or take us deeper in search of answers. And all the while be hoping old age gets me before the sea monsters do. I'll give Maida just one thing. She was right about these caves. There's enough lithium there to fabricate a hundred tons of plasteel. Enough for a damn fleet of Cyclops submarines. There was nothing anyone could have done to avoid crashing here. But I was right to order the detour. If we get off this planet, they'll be talking about the Torgel share price on the other side of the Federation. <laughs> so he's 80, is that what he said? He's 80, right? Yeah, he turned 80 years old and he thought he had another 80 in him. So like average lifespan, 150 years. That's pretty good, man. Uh, but we got two new ones to listen to. One is deeper. The other is this one. Let's listen to this one first. Something incredible just happened. Since we're down here, I had this plan to build equipment and study the life forms we were encountering, but I didn't have enough enameled glass. So I started looking for a natural substrate that would strengthen the glass we have. And those stalker teeth we've been finding fit the bill. Only, well, we needed more. That's when Marguerite got interested. She actually listened to me. More than I can say for father. And I worked up the courage to talk about my more Welcome tentative aboard, theories. When I told her they were attracted to metal deposits, that their teeth get dislodged when they pick them up, her eyes narrowed and she dashed out of the room. Three hours later, she came back, her pack loaded down with stalker teeth. 
I asked her about it. She shrugged and said my theories were good. Said she had the meeting out of the palm of her hand. I think she meant it literally. She is incredible. She went out to the kelp forest, armed with just a heat blade, and went fin to fin with a pack of stalkers. On the one hand, that is the coolest thing I have ever heard. On the other, well, I hope the stalkers didn't come off worse than Marguerite did. She had a huge gash on her forearm. I don't think things went as smoothly as she made out. And what's the point in surviving here, if we have to kill everything that makes it so wonderful? I wish I knew more about these animals. But Father won't let me leave the habitat. Maybe with all this glass, we could build a containment unit and get up close to them. We're already 200 meters below sea level. You want to go deeper? Look around us, Chief. Water leaking through the hull, water outside the hatch. We're drowning real slow. If rescue arrives, whatever shot us down, it's gonna do it again and again until it's shut off. You see an off switch around here, Chief? Why would it any more likely be half a kilometer down? Your kid found something on the scanner. There's something down there. Something that shouldn't be. <laughs> You're mad! I'm going all the same. And I have an idea you two are gonna follow. But if you do, be mindful. Your authority stopped at sea level. Oh boy. Of course. Maida, you crazy woman. So they went even deeper. I didn't get any coordinates for it, so one can only assume where. All right, we have about nine minutes. I was just collecting some magnetite because I know we're going to need them. I've ran into about 90 different fish and they're all dead. I don't feel bad at all. I would eat them if I could relocate their corpses. Um, but yeah, so we're moving forward. We got to go to the sunbeam. I don't even actually even know if we have enough time, but let's hope we do. So the exit's right above here. Okay. Someone just got shot to the moon. I'm actually, <laughs> I'm actually pretty upset at myself that I didn't know this earlier. Okay. So we're back out here. We got to go about 1500 meters this way. All right. I will see you guys there. All right. So the sunbeam is about six minutes away. I hear a deadly predator in the distance. In the distance when to die. It actually sounds really close. I don't want my Seamoth being destroyed. So if we could just not and say we did. Oh, cool. I can spend my time uh, gathering some blueprints. Yay, 67%. Here it is. And look at that. Makes you wonder what it is, right? Again, I'm trying not to spoil for you guys. Uh, I'll let the, the, the information flow naturally. But just letting you know, I already know what this is. I already know what's going to happen, all right? Well, five minutes to wait. I think I'm going to look around and see what I can find. Hello, beautiful people. Oh, Reginald, Reginald, I need you. I need you to make babies. Look how deep this thing goes. This thing is actually really awesome. When you take take a step back and you appreciate what you're looking at, it's quite amazing. I don't like the sound of that. <gasps> oh, hello. Hello. Hi there. I'm going to scan you. Quickly. Oh, well, it disappeared, but I, I want to, I want to scan it. Oh yeah. The islands are over here. Never mind. I thought this was, I thought this was the end of the map called the void. And I was actually extreme. Jesus Christ. Hello. 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 I'm just doing something real quick. Scan you. Scan you. It, ah, okay. It attacks. It definitely attacks. Hello. Come here. Ah, run. Run. Stop it. No. Look, I got a plane to catch. Thank you. Now, let's take a look at that warper, huh? All right, the war- I'm about to die. Hold on. Whoop. The warper, an aggressive creature with the ability to teleport itself and others in space. No genetic crossover identified with indigenous life forms demonstrates no recognized defensive behavior. One is the head mechanisms located in the head region provide its warping capability used- or which it uses to stalk its targets. Two, the torso. Appears to hunt other life forms, but no digestive organs- have been identified internal structure considerably more complex than other known organisms unable to distinguish whether organic or artificial in nature assessment is further research required it doesn't say we should avoid but one would assume that that's what you should do see look at this you guys are like hey oh, this bulb of truth gone forever dude i got millions 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 upon billions of bulb tree samples that i can use 
to eat because I'm not going to plant these. They suck. Ooh, Sunbeam's going to pick us up at night, right? Yeah, this is going to be a fun time. All right, let's get this over with. All right. Ooh. All right. There's something up here. This is actually good looking. I don't think I've ever seen this at night. All right. I'm going up here. I got to pick up an artifact. Hey, beautiful. I'm going to scan you first. Hold on. Ah, this carbon-based device is lighter than it looks and features a symbol which resembles a U lit up in purple. Despite the onboard power still functioning, algae growth on the exterior indicates it was abandoned hundreds, perhaps thousands of years ago. While the technology is far beyond Federation levels and there is no obvious way to inter interface with it, uh, it should nonetheless be possible to fabricate the precise physical copy of the device if necessary. So now we can create this uh, once we pick it up. Or I guess already. Cool. Oh. Survivor, we see you. Man, I don't know how you held out down there. We broke an atmosphere, and we're descending towards the landing site. <laughs> is that a building down there? What do you mean you're there it is. Hold on. There's no turning back now. Positions, everyone. Touching down in 10, 9, 8. It's coming from the building? Change course. Set thrusters to full. Probably would have been smart for me to take some uh, a bit of an understanding from from paul uh in his log saying that a rescue ship comes it's likely going to get shot down too we can assume that because the aurora got shot down that this one is going to as well well there goes all hope now we just lay on this beautiful beach and die in peace all right so now since uh, our character's interest is peaked for this device as if it wasn't already we're gonna go inside I'm gonna use our little tablet thing. Oh, right, there's one over here. I can scan this one too. Hang on a second. What? Oh, never mind. Okay, take my stuff. Take my jewels. Yeah. Force field control. Hello. Scan it, scan it, scan it, scan it. Okay, cool. Uh, this device matches no known technologies and is like an alien in nature, blah, blah, blah. Nonetheless, there's a good chance it functions like a regular lock. Yes. Awesome. Scans indicate this structure is composed of a metal alloy with unprecedented integrity. No match is found in database. Performing structural analysis. Well, that's nice. Man, this place is much brighter than I remember. It's actually quite beautiful. With the specular lighting, this looks, oh, top-notch. Unknown language. Attempting translation. Okay, that was cool. Uh, discovered inside an alien facility, it was not possible to translate any useful information. However, scans have returned some information on the device itself. It is likely a solid-state computer, although there is no clear way to interface with it. When approached, it began producing a low-frequency radio wave containing complex but recognizable data patterns. Uh, it is likely the alien species which designed this technology evolved or genetically selected sensory apparatus to hear and understand the information being broadcast by the device and to communicate back. The mental processing power required to perform this kind of telepathy would imply the designers were considerably more psychologically developed than the common human. Further research required. Okay. Ah, uh, yes. Now we can find... Oh, I think uh, we got to go a little bit further to do this, but this is going to help us have better power. That's all I care about. Ion cube. Likely grown artificially. Cubic appearance suggests it has been cut from a larger deposit. Each cube contains an equivalent ionic energy of five kilotons of TNT. Jesus Lord. It's a lot of power. Kilotons. All right, let's just keep that there. Keep it nice and safe. Oh. patterns on the walls cannot ascertain whether their purpose is aesthetic or functional. Further data required. Yeah. You know, we can't decide whether we know if this is just to look cool. I mean, were, the, were they worried about that? Are they worried about looking cool for their friends and their pals they invite over for Sunday brunch? No. Likely this is uh, very important and we'll never understand what it's used for. 
which is awesome. All right, enforcement platform schematic. This data set appears to be a multi-dimensional schematic of some kind. By mapping the pattern to three-dimensional space, it is possible to gather a basic understanding of this facility's internal workings. Construction material. The facility's unknown construction material is identified as an ultra-hard non-reactive metal amalgam synthesized from off-world materials. There's no indication that it can be damaged or destroyed by available means. Power. The schematic indicates the facility was to be powered by a separate self-sustaining power plant located elsewhere on the planet. The location is not listed, but there's evidence the designers intended to harness the planet's natural thermal energy, obviously going to be down where the volcano is. Uh, layout. The facility consists of the upper engineering section where the schematic was found and the control room, which is accessed via a security sealed elevator shaft or a separate underwater moon pool. Control. The control room in the lower section houses the only known way to interface with the facility. However, the schematic does not detail the operation procedure or installed security measures. AKA, this thing is way too complex for us to understand. Your best of interfacing huh? with this facility is achieved by accessing the control room in the lower section. Sick. But yeah, basically, this thing is way too complex for our tiny little human three-dimensional space beings to understand. Oh, yeah, this thing got moved. Oh, it's different. <laughs> alien rifle. Let's go. Data download alien rifle. Uh, the strong resemblance to human weaponry in form. This device must have been designed with a humanoid user in mind. Whether the aliens that built the structure were themselves humanoid or otherwise employed the use of humanoids is unclear. What is clear is that they considered defending this facility a necessary precaution. There's no obvious way to remove the rifle from the case. No obvious way. But I bet I can get in there. Wouldn't that be a nice Easter egg? Come on. Let me, just let me have it. There's no obvious way, but there's a way. Oh, <gasps> wait. Oh my god, I thought I had it figured out. That's awesome. I want it. I'm gonna figure it out. If you guys have any ideas, post in the comment section below. All right, so here's another one of these. If you can't figure it out by now, it's, uh, I'm gonna spoil it for you. It's a teleporter. We can go places, dude. Ooh, that lit up for me. Thank you. It's like red carpet, thanks. But yeah, this one is a receiving end of a teleporter. You can't, it's not a two way. Purple tablet, my inventory is full. I think you're telling the truth. There we go. Give me that tablet. What kind of games do you think they play on their tablets, huh? These aliens. Played some kind of alien runner game. Do you think they played Minecraft? Oh, look! Alien device. That looks dangerous. I shouldn't be scanning it. Doomsday device. <laughs> Scan to the gate. This device contains enough potential energy to destroy the entire planet, along with most of this solar system. Fortunately, it has malfunctioned. That's actually crazy. Now, it makes me wonder why would they have this here is it that it has malfunctioned right and that it's being stored here for display right these guys seem you know could be aesthetic beings like they're they're here to look good uh, and this is like hey look at what we have here or it's there for protection maybe the the gun down here is in a case that's kind of similar to like you know a fire extinguisher or a, a fire axe that you have to like bust the glass out to use in case you need to. Maybe there's only one of the aliens needed to be able to defend this base. And this could be the, the kill switch. This could be like, oh, well, the place is doomed. You know, we should just destroy the whole place. We could just end it, end it all, dude. And I could take the whole planet with me. What do you guys think? Should I do it? Actually, wait a second. You look closely. It looks like the inside of it is pulsing. <sighs> Can you imagine having that kind of technology? My goodness. Okay. Ooh. The facilities control room lies beyond this doorway. Yep. Thank you, Susie Q. We got the key. Now we can turn off this bad boy. So that way we can save the sun. Oh, wait. Hello. I can't see. Oh, I can scan it. Okay, cool. Energy core. I can't read that. Energy core. This device houses energy equivalent to a 100 megaton nuclear detonation which can be channeled through the facility and directed at vessels overhead or bent around the planet's gravitational pull to strike targets in orbit power is routed via the attachment terminal allowing for the device to be deactivated if necessary it is currently operating without parameters suggesting it will target any ship within range well i wish i had known that now the sunbeam is dead now every, every quinn is gone Oh, yeah. Press that button. Oh, we're gonna die. 
Oh, hey, cutie. Haven't seen you in a bit, girl. What's up? Just taking another another thing of blood. That's fine. Is it my blood, though? The control panel is broadcasting a message. Translation reads, Warning, infected individuals may not disable the weapon. This planet is under quarantine. So scary, dude. The word quarantine just sounds so terrifying. Translating background broadcast. Downloading summary to databank. Oh, there we go. Alien factory locations. Uh, intercepted background data regarding further alien facilities elsewhere on the planet. Disease research facility. Depth 800 meters. Location. Cave system with extensive fossil record southwest of enforcement platform. Uh, live specimen study. Synthesis of antidote for highly infectious bacterium des designated Kara, which has been changed. It was the Kara, now it's the Kara which is basically the exact same thing in Natural Selection 2, which is the game also developed by Unknown Worlds. Sanctuary A, data corrupted. Sanctuary B, data corrupted. Offsite laboratory, data corrupted. Primary containment facility, data corrupted. Cool, in the event of an outbreak, quarantine procedures will be automatically, did I just say automatically? Automatically enforced with immediate effect. The quarantine enforcement platform will target all incoming and outgoing craft to prevent the spread of infection off world well then i know like i said a great way to deal with that you have the device right here just fix it you guys are smart i know it's malfunctioned but come on how complicated can it be it's just compact energy you guys have that too a hundred megaton shot just blew up our friends so the karar i might as well scan myself how infected am i self-scan complete Bacterial infection in your system is progressing, detecting skin irritation and immune system response. Further data required to identify bacterial strain. My skin has some irritation. It would be really cool to see my guy scratch every now and then if I'm like standing still. So our objective is to go deeper, not only for the Degassi to find out where they went to, but also for the disease research facility. All right, so uh, let's get our sea moth. We gotta get out of here. Is it still nighttime? Oh, it's daytime. Oh boy. Oh boy. All right. Oh, just leave me alone, please. Gotta get to my sea moth. I'm getting out of here, dude. Oh no, I hear you, big boy. I hear you, big boy. Oh, <gasps> yes. Gel sec. Yes. This thing is actually kind of important, isn't it? I got air gel. Oh, that's what. Okay, so I gotta, I gotta plant this so I can get more. All right, Mr. Mothy. So we got to head back to the escape pod real quick in our base, reevaluate ourselves, maybe make a power cell. I'm probably going to need that. My power is dwindling down. And then we're going to head over to the other proposed Degassi habitat. That's 500 meters down. So we're going to have to upgrade, right? We're going to have to upgrade our Seamoth to go a little bit deeper instead of spending all the time to get a Cyclops. I don't even have the equipment for it. Anyway, I'll see you guys there. Ah, excellent. Okay, so let's take a look. We don't have much power in this base. 75 is it, but uh, hey, the trees are growing and we got the marble melons. Yay, oh, make some babies, make some babies. Please make some babies. Don't be infected babies. Okay, so I got all my stuff stored. We got ion cubes batteries for day we got a gel sack and we can make ourselves a nice little foundation just kind of right here exterior grow bed just put it right here and i shall plant this no no uh, i pressed the wrong button you know it's fine totally fine great i could have had a surplus of that stuff Ton of them. I'm so stupid. Uh, great. I have no room for it. <laughs> oh, all right. I'm going to have to take you guys out. I'm so sorry. If you were making babies, I'm sorry. All right. I just got to do this real quick. There we go. Right in the corner. Titanium, copper wire, whatever. Aquarium is back. Put back my beautiful fishies. Make the love. Make the sweet, sweet love, please. Need a copper wire and an aerogel which I do have, right? Oh no, I don't because I ate the gel sack. Oh my God. I'm so, st ugh, so stupid. All right, I'm making a locker real quick and I'm gonna put extra seeds 
right in there that I can replant. All right, well, we need to make a fabricator for sure. There we go. Titanium gold and table coral sample. That that changed again. What is it to build the modification station? So it's a computer chip, titanium, diamond, and lead. Here we go, computer chip. And then, what was I trying to make? All right, take that. I need diamond. Diamond, diamond, diamond. Diamond! Yay, and the lead. Yes! A lot of potential stuff here. A heat blade, or thermoblade, as it's called. Super upgrades, dude. What do we need for the ultra high capacity tank? Uh, four lithium and then, oh my God, I got this, dude. One, two, three, four. And then we need to take off our high capacity. And yes, dude, upgrade for everything. Let's go. 225. Oh, so good. Okay, what's next? Uh, upgrades, ultra glide fins would be nice. Uh, I have that. It's titanium, two silicone rubbers. Let me make sure I can do, hold on. Uh, I need to do the Seamoth upgrade. So I need that, Plasteel ingots, enameled glass, and two magnetite. Okay, depth considerably does not stack. A stalker tooth. Oh, we gotta go hunt some stalkers. Hang on a second. Well, since we're gonna be searching around, let's make these fins. We need two silicone rubber, titanium, and a lithium. Oh, I need to take off my fins first. Hold on. There we go. Ultra glide fins, gonna be super helpful. Modification station, dude, we just made, oh my God, we made so much good stuff. Okay, so we need stalker teeth and a bunch of titanium. All right, it's getting nighttime. I kind of need my sea moth. Hang on a second. There you are. Okay, so I know I don't need to kill you. What I do need to do is find your teeth. Oh, look, he's got a stockpile. What's up, dude? No, no, okay. All right, I should get a peeper. Peeper, come here. <laughs> nope, I got one for you. Here, take it, take it, take it. Yes, now go away. Wait. Oh, wait, they're supposed to eat out of my hand. That's right. That's my fault. That's my fault. I'm just looking, guys. Everybody calm down. Now, typically, the stalker teeth are going to be where they're stockpiling things like the titanium because it breaks off their teeth. I don't know how they grow back so fast, but you know what? It's obviously an alien planet. You got a teeth? You got a tooth for me? My dude. I just need... Come here. Come here. Yes. Yes. Oh, wait, was that it? I swear I just saw one. So this one's going to be friendly to me for now, which is nice. I just need a freaking stalker to... Oh, found it. I lied. That's not it. Crap. This thing is... Pl this place is playing tricks on my eyes, dude. I can't see anything. Give me two. Two of them. Two of them. Let's go. Uh, whoa. Uh, see moth. Wait, that was a good one, right? Yeah, he likes me. He likes me. I don't know how long that lasts for, but yes, you can tame those guys. Oh, yeah, I also need quartz. Hang on a second. All right, this should be enough. I got some copper and stuff, too, so I can make another solar panel. All righty. Do we have another one? Nope. You'll take forever. All right. We've got our titanium. Make a quick glass. Make the titanium ingot. Enamel glass. And the plastic ingot. Oh, yeah. That was super quick. Now, we have to take, I believe, I gotta get my seam off one second and get the upgrade out. Your light, no, turn off your lights, dude. You're wasting battery. All right, depth. We'll take that out. And there we are. What's the next one? Three rubies and a plastic ingot. Dude, are you serious? We could make this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna freaking do it. Dude, let's get some more titanium real quick. All right, we got the plastic ingot and the rubies. Come on. Oh, dude, this is amazing. Ha 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 ha! Dude, usually you're supposed to get that in like a stepping kind of upgrade fashion. Like you get one, you get to adventure a little bit farther and you get more stuff. But now we get it in one shot. This should bring us to like 900 depth, which means we don't need to make the Cyclops. Yes, we don't need to make the Cyclops to go down to where we need to go. I do want to make a Cyclops in the future, but for now, this is going to be good. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and pause it though. I am all out of time. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to hit the like button. Let me know in the comment section below all your tips and suggestions. They're very much appreciated. And of course, let me know if you want to see some more. I love you all, and I will see you guys in the next one.